Hello again and welcome. In this video we're going to continue our discussion of discharging high voltage capacitors. You can see we have the EV Blog BM235 out. This meter has a low Z mode. This is uh, very similar to how this BM789 works with the BM235 when you're in this low Z mode. I believe it goes through one of the high speed clamps where it doesn't with the BM789. First question we have though is what's the breakdown voltage of this with the MOVs? Again, when you're using the low Z mode, the MOVs are actually in play. So let's just see where these begin to switch at. Again, we're just going to be using our ESD gun. And let's start turning up the voltage. Here we're at 1.4 kV, 1.6, 1.8. And that's where she's folding back. So unfortunately with this particular meter, we can't apply 2kV to the input of this. It'll probably damage the MOVs. What we'd like is the MOVs to clip a little bit higher than 2000 volts. Somebody else had asked about the BM869S. So the first thing I'm curious about is what is the breakdown voltage of the MOVs for this particular meter. So let's just see. Is this higher than 2kV? It's actually lower. I mean right here we're at uh, 1.34kV. And that's where this is folding back. So, yeah, the clamp circuitry on this meter is quite a bit lower. Now, I have another BM869S. Again, this is the newer one that they had supplied me. Or this is the original one that I purchased. Let's just see if this clamps at the same voltage. All right, we'll start turning up our power supply. Oh, this one goes up a little higher. Yeah, about 1.76 or so. So with these two meters, again... Unfortunately, putting that kind of voltage directly to the input, what can end up happening is we could end up stressing the MOVs. Here we're using a 1K ohm resistor in series with the large PTC out of the BM789 prototype board. And then in series with this, we have two small MOVs, and these start to conduct at 1.75 kV. We're going to be applying 2 kV across the circuit. So here we are at 1,000 volts. See if we look across the mob, we have basically a thousand volts, and across the resistor and PTC, basically 40 volts, and that's because the mobs again will start to break down at 1.7 kV. Let's go ahead and turn up the power supply a little higher. So now we're putting out roughly 2,000 volts. I would expect the drop across this to be a little higher now. Let's just see. See we're putting out about 20 volts or so. Let's check across the PTC. See it's about 33. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if the camera is going to capture that, but there's definitely some smoke coming off of this. Looks like we burned the mob. Let's just go ahead and force that connection. Oh. It just came unsoldered from the PTC. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going to bring the camera in here a little closer. So let's just get rid of that mob, and we'll use the single mob. All right, so now we just have the single mob attached. Here's what's left of the first one. This thing is actually still quite hot. All right, let's start turning up our power supply. You can see the smoke starting to come off of this. And you can see we're currently putting out 2,000 volts across this. And it has stopped smoking. Let's just see how much now it's dropped across the PTC and resistor. see about 1600 volts or so. The rest of this is being dropped across our MOV. About 370 volts or so. What we'll do now is just clamp directly across the PTC and resistor. Let's go ahead and turn up our voltage.
All right, let's see how much is dropped across the PTC. Basically all of it. You can see 1700, 18. So there's 2000 volts. The highest voltage rating I've seen for a PTC is about 1000 volts. Again, we'll just let this sit here for a little bit. All right, it's been sitting for a good 20 minutes. Let's go ahead and turn it off. Let's just go ahead and short out our bank. There we go. All right, let's see what our mob measures after all that punishment. So you can see it's uh, 1.4, 1.6 meg. <laughs> so I'd say we've definitely damaged it. And let's see what our PTC measures. So 1.24 looks like it's cooling down again this thing started out at 1.12 let's check our resistor it should have been 1.00k and you can see it's still spot on so we haven't degraded the resistor at all the PTC is probably okay you can see now 1.19 I'll come back and check it later but the MAV definitely has a lower resistance now. I've got this little test board. You may remember seeing this. Let's just look across one of the MAVs on it. And you can see this reads an open. This is what you would expect. Let's just look at our other two. So here to here, that's an open. And here to here, that's an open. All right, this has been a few minutes now. Let's have a look. Oh, it's pretty close. So 1.12 is what I had measured. You can see 1.1268. So the PTC is fully recovered. All right, let's try the same test using our little test board. It's 1.18. And then this one measures 1.3 or so. With this one, I have two 1K resistors in series. You can see here is our 2K, and with this one I have a 1.5K ohm in series. Oh yeah, you can hear something breaking down right now. You can see the smoke coming off of it. Looks like our one mob is starting to burn. You can see our flux is already starting to melt. Looks like our solder is actually doing a little reflowing here as well. Alright, let's discharge our bank. And now what I'm going to do is supply power to this side. So again, what I'm doing is I'm basically taking the 2KV across these two resistors. You can see this PTC is quite a bit smaller. Let's just see if it'll survive this. See the PTC is starting to warm up. And go ahead and increase the voltage. Alright, this is about the limit I can get out of this. Let's just see what's happening here. So how much is dropped across our ma or how much is dropped across the PTC? Looks like all of it. 1.7k. Something's starting to burn. Everything I notice, see right here. See now we're able to supply the 2KV 
and let's look across the PTC and you can see it's reading 2000 volts alright shut that back down and again just make sure our bank is discharged I want to show you something really interesting here we'll have to take the camera off of the mount see that it's a little streamer of solder that was extruded out of this mob while we were heating it see on the other side here so there's another solder ball but these parts are actually quite a bit more robust than what I would expect <sighs> well if it sounds like I have a cold it's because I do I think that's gonna be it for this video Hopefully now you understand that just because I've been showing these high voltage tests with the Bryman BM789 That doesn't mean every other meter that Bryman or Fluke makes could survive that 2000 volts directly across its inputs While it's switched to these different modes and I would imagine most people don't have a way to measure where the mobs start to conduct anyway So you really aren't going to know if you're encroaching on that switch point or not but most of the meters are going to clamp somewhere around 2,000 volts. The fact that the 789 is just a little bit higher than that, it's very possible you could get another 789 that has a little bit lower conduction voltage and it may not survive. So my advice is just don't take any meter and attach 2,000 volts DC to it unless the meter is actually rated to handle that 2,000 volts. Well, that's all for now. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Later.